Greetings, everyone. Welcome to yet another installation of the Old Frigga Podcast. I'm your host, Jack Austin. With me, as always, Mr. Ryan. Yo. What to do, buddy? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm so glad you're good. I'm so glad you're here. I'm back with you. Let's do this thing. Mr. Ryan, how's the Great White North? Indubitably. <laughs> is it still uh, course, white? Uh, is it still white? Uh, no, it's actually uh, it's quite dark now. Is it the brown, great brown there. north? It's it's muddy because we've been getting a lot of rain. So brown. Okay. Nello, how you doing, buddy? Oh, hi. Well, I didn't know it was my turn. You didn't say my name. I know. I just looked at he you. Literally said, did, he well, literally did say your name, though. He said, hi, oh. Nello. I was paying attention. Shocker. Shock of the century. <laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> here we go. Episode 169. So happy hey. to be here. Um, you guys, if you're listening to this, probably have a plethora of episodes to listen to because we just uploaded a couple of them. So hopefully you're entertained by that. Uh, but here we are. Here we are. Exciting, fun things to talk about here on the Alter Ego podcast. So how's everybody doing? Good? Wonderful. Good. Great. Swell. Wonderful. Swell even? Swell. Whoa. Okay. All right. Well, let's jump right into it, shall we? You know, I know we don't have much to talk about, but, you know, let's get into uh, what we do have to talk about. Uh, let's start with movies and TV, shall we? Is that exciting? Should we do that? Depends yeah, what movies and TV. All right. Anne Hathaway recently in, uh, she's been in a couple different movies recently, but her, her big one uh, that she's crediting her career to, uh, Interstellar with Christopher Nolan, correct? Says he helped mm -hmm. save her career. <clears throat> Do we agree with that? I mean, I don't. I don't really know if her career was ever in a spot where I noticed it. Super well, there hard. was there was a point in time where her internet personality, for some reason, became toxic, and I think it was sometime after the the Dark Knight trilogy when she played Catwoman. I don't know why. I I'm not familiar with the story, but a lot of internet people started hating her for some reason. Internet people. Not well, it, it it got to a point where she actually wasn't casted in a lot of like she was she was struggling to get work. Mm. <laughs> I don't know about this struggling to get work. Thing. I mean, there's a lot of movies in her repertoire. Yeah, there are. I, you know what, though? She's to me and I, I don't I'm not going to subscribe to be somebody who's a big fan of her catalog of work. I don't know too much of what she's done outside of that. Um, she seems funny, but she seems very vanilla, right? Like she doesn't. Yeah. Like she's got a whole ton of, of personality. And I don't <clears throat> I don't mean that negatively. I just don't have enough to, to go off of. She Speaking seems like it, she really plays the same woman in every movie. I watched The Hustle. It wasn't that, makes that sense. bad. That makes sense. Like though. It wasn't like the greatest thing I've ever but like, seen, but it's not a bad watch. Let's think about The, the Dark Knight Rises. I wasn't blown away by her performance as no. Cat. No, not a I little bit. Really like, whoa. Like, you know, yeah. when, when it was Michelle Pfeiffer way back in the day, it's all people want to talk about. She's really forgettable. I mean, and the uh, uh, there are certain reasons why I liked it. The newest Catwoman what was her name? Oh my God, yeah, she's Zaza, uh, whatever. She's uh, oh, Lenny Kravitz's daughter. Lenny Kravitz's daughter. Thank you. You see me doing yeah. the air guitar. Yeah, <laughs> so she's the uh, you know, Kravitz, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, uh, slap at the bass. Yeah, slap at the bass, man. You named all these like good actors. Like even Halle Berry tried Catwoman, but you're always and going back to memorable. Michelle Pfeiffer. Why? Yeah. It well, it, when you have a memorable performance like that, and you you recast the character. You tend to get a lot of lot of uh, criticisms and a lot of comparisons. I mean, when Michael Keaton stopped being Batman, and then all of a sudden we had Val Kilmer and we had George Clooney, same thing happened. Let's also talk about the comic book movie goer and the fact that it was Michelle Pfeiffer wearing very skin tight leather head to toe, and that hadn't really been detect depicted on film before like that. But like the mental no. break, her like stapling the suit together, like she like engulf the character for the first time but is it nostalgia again uh, no not for this one <laughs> i mean like this cat i mean michelle pfeiffer played a really good cat woman i mean cat woman is a deranged human being she's not she's not all mentally there right I mean, she dresses up as a cat i mean it's no different than batman batman is still a mentally deranged human being right and and maybe that's the big uh the big thing that makes it different because dark knight series with christopher nolan kind of had to try to have that realism to it like they tried yeah. to 
make make logic more of a part and for that the part the part is great but in terms of catwoman what you're expecting it really didn't hit home for me i don't know i agree 100 percent um watch that movie again because i don't even remember Anne hathaway being in it right <laughs> right she robs batman at the very beginning and then from then on yeah it's just kind of there she had a couple decent fight scenes, but it wasn't like, oh, my God. Right. It wasn't like the first time we saw Scarlett Johansson throwing down an Iron Man 2. That was, oh, my God. Agreed. Yes, that was, oh, my God, 100%. Very iconic fight scene. One that stands out in the MCU to me, no matter what. I mean, of all those, that first scene when Favreau's going in there with her happy Hogan, and he's fighting the one dude for five minutes and the whole time she's taking down literally everyone else amazing that was definitely a point of arrival for black widow which i love 100 percent. but there's nothing like that from that dark knight rises movie no um speaking of people who have kind of had weird tumultuous kind of careers in my opinion aaron taylor johnson of apparently cast as 007 i mean we just learned craven hasn't come out yet so yeah it was uh the guy who played mm-hmm. quicksilver quicksilver he was in kick-ass when he, he was, was tiny ass. and skinny, he was, he was kick ass. He was kick in that ass. movie with uh, Brad Pitt in the train. Bullet train, bullet train. Now, which, what, which which you saw that, right? Bullet train was actually I I loved it. I thought it was really good, and now, he he there did there? a he did a very good job in it. Good, 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 good. But good. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of James Bond, I think casting Aaron Taylor Johnson is is you're going to get one of two results. Either one, you're going to get a really, really, really good James Bond, or two you're going to get the death of James Bond. I don't think there's any in between. I don't think you're going to get the death of James Bond. I think that's a character that transcends uh, actors who play him because like, look who, at who have been the past two James Bonds though. Daniel What's that? Craig and uh, Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. Two okay. of arguably the top three or four James Bonds of all time. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. I mean, there just because been, you know, oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. In terms, in terms of success for the franchise, two of well, top three or four. It's also, it's also very difficult Marketing to compare to people like Roger Moore and and Sean uh, Sean Connery to now the the way that studios do movies. That's yeah, not a fair. Comparison. That's not a fair comparison. But like, I, I still I, I get what you're saying. They were they were box office successes for sure. That's that I is per- the point that I'm talking about. I personally prefer. Uh, Pierce Brosnan and Connery before Daniel Craig. I didn't ever I will buy bet Daniel you, Craig as 007. I will bet you if you went on the streets and you asked 10 people, they're going to name Sean Connery more than they were Pierce Brosnan. I bet you that's lose not that. that's not the point that I was making, and he'd probably lose that as well. But oh. uh, in, uh, in Daniel Craig's defense, though, they also changed the game significantly when he became 007 because before it was a lot more of the espionage style movie. It was a lot more like him investigating scenarios. He had one or two fights here or there. When they went to Daniel Craig, there was a lot more action. There was a lot more hand-to-hand combat. There was a lot more CGI, which they did not have in the 007s before that. I'm just talking about the look of him. I yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, me personally, I don't buy this guy as James Bond. Right. I really don't. You don't buy Aaron Taylor Johnson as, no. as James Bond? No. Oh, I, I do. I do in a heartbeat. I do I in a heartbeat. Think- I think if they go with a younger story or, a, you know what I mean? Like something completely different, it, it can do very well. Uh, I, I mean, he's a, he's a very attractive man. He's got, the, he's got the action down. He's pat. hot. He's hot. He he's is. A he's a good looking guy. guy. I think you're just going to get the bullet train character, but refined. That's it. And I, and I like that character. If he, he, he can pull it off. Now, the reason, the reason why I made the comment that I made is because we are in the era right now of, reboots it's reboot 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 and i understand that james bond has been around for decades but at the same time your average moviegoer is going to look at this as like oh we're doing james bond again and if he sucks people aren't going to care about a james bond sequel they're not and if a james bond sequel tanks hard it may be decades before you see james bond again i I got a boy henry cavill i don't don't think it's going to tank however no to that comment to that comment, if Henry Cavill was cast as 007, yes, that in movie a heartbeat, loaded. He should have been Archer. It wouldn't have been a question of, of whether or not 007 was going to do well. It would have been like, how much money do we think 007 is going to do? By the way, we'll get back to Henry Cavill. Let's let's put a pin in Henry Cavill for now. Uh, the, there was a Bad Boys 4 trailer. 
Bad so boys, um, bad boys. Will Smith moving on with his life, not worry, not getting a lot of backlash for slapping Chris Rock, went back to the well over to Bad Boys 4. Now listen, I <clears throat> there's a small part of me that's excited about this movie for one small reason. There was a very particular fourth installment in a buddy cop franchise in the late 90s Lead the weapon that did four. very, very well. Lead the Weapon 4 was awesome. Lethal Weapon 4 was awesome. What did Lethal Weapon 4 have? Jelly. And? Chris Rock. Boom! Slap in the face! <laughs> okay, no, I'm kidding. But seriously, Jet Li was a major, major part of that. No, no yep. respect to Danny Glover or Mel Gibson. Mel they were Gibson's both incredible good. in that yeah. movie. But Without also- Jet Li, that isn't as good. It's not nowhere near as good. They had Joe Pesci. They had Rene Russo. They had um, some- Chris Rock. I mean, they had a lot of people in that movie, and it was excellent. They you had know? Uncle Benny. Uh, Uncle Benny. <laughs> but also, let's also look at the Click. let's look at the, the tone, though, of both of those movies. Bad Boys, and in since Bad Boys 2, which is the only one that I've really seen multiple times, <laughs> has has the adrenaline kicked up quite a bit compared to Lethal Weapon. Yeah. Well, Lethal Weapon was also an 80s action movie. Yeah. <sighs> I miss those days. If you if you compare if you compare the first Bad Boys if you uh, compare the first Bad Boys to Lethal Weapon it actually matches up quite well. Okay, I believe you. Sure. Um, yeah, the first Bad Boys. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really too. stoked about this movie, to be honest. <laughs> no. Like this I said it? before the show, I'm gonna watch it for nostalgia, and that's it. That's great. Oh wow, that word just keeps wait coming up today. Let's, let's talk nostalgia, shall we? I don't want to yeah. talk spoilers because it's just recent. <clears throat> come out but i have seen the roadhouse remake same i'll tell you what if you are a big fan of the old movie and want a shot for shot remake you won't like this movie you won't if you're there for a good time to watch just a decent movie and people get their ass kicked go (laughs) go watch this movie yeah and there's some pretty decent uh comedic relief too throughout the the movie the standout the best performance of the whole movie and this is my opinion so you can't say i'm wrong is conor mcgregor and i i will i will double stamp on that i want to see this movie now conor mcgregor i'm ready rushes i'm in this ready i'm ready listen i was actually telling somebody this the other day i feel like conor mcgregor just showed up to the set and they were like you know what do you just be you just be you man and he was like oh okay and well, that's all he did the whole movie. What do, do with these focus right here. <laughs> just be you and take these take these steroids and this other stuff. I don't know if he's out. he might be right now, no, but my boy has got the Vince McMahon walk. Did he do that walk? Yes, Could, he did. He, yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he's got it, it down pat. God, it's like it, it was so like the the role. I know the role he's taking over from the other guy from the original Roadhouse, which I love the original Roadhouse. And if Great I had. If I had to put a movie to movie, I'm going with the original. Oh. However, this one. Now I'm curious. The character, like, okay, okay. So from that movie, I'll take that Dalton. I'll take Swayze. Not yep. performance wise, because there's absolutely nothing to take away from Jake Gyllenhaal. He played his ass off the way he was supposed to for this movie. That's not it. I just like the way that Dalton was predict- depicted more than this one. Really? Uh, the love interest. I'll take the one over here. Oh, shit. Uh, not the remake. Not, not the remake. Uh, not the one right. thing that this, the one thing that the original had that this one didn't too is is the, um, uh, oh my god, what's his name, um, Sam Elliott. Yeah, we did not have we did not have the Sam Elliott style character in the in the second one. No mentor that shows up. Yeah. to help yeah. At any point. Um. Uh. The other part, the villain, the villain. I'm taking the old one. He was way uh, better. Same. Um, however, the dude who does the dirty work from the first one compared to Conor McGregor, there's no comparison. There's no comparison. I would Conor McGregor that, that was hands better. down dominates. And here's the one thing: the goons that work for the bad guy, they definitely <laughs> take the candle over the original goons. Right? Was yes. it one of them, like really big? Like he was really big. He was funny. Polar bear fell on. Yeah, me. I guy. loved him. I loved him, yeah. but. Everyone else is forgettable from moment one. This guy's like a yeah, but the guys in this one are really good. They're really good. 
Uh, they were fun to watch. I don't know. It's a fun movie. You're not going to be like trying to fucking phone the Oscars to tell them how great this movie is. But if you want just something fun to have on in the background, we just threw it on, watched it as a family. It was great. And my son looks at me and goes, Dad, you really like movies about guys who beat the crap out of people <laughs> when they're mean to other people. And I go, yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> I think so. I, I made this analogy for a for a free movie. Well, free if you're a, subscri a subscriber to uh, Amazon Prime yeah. for a free movie. It's definitely worth the watch. Really? I don't know if I would have I, I, I would not have gone to the movie theater to watch this. I would have been upset had I paid to go watch it. But because really? I am an Amazon. Yes, I, I probably would have been upset had I paid. Well, that also has something to do with the fact that going to the movie theater costs you hundreds of dollars nowadays. But you're not uh, wrong. Because of the fact that this was on Amazon Prime, I was able to sit on my couch and watch it in front of my big screen. Hundred percent, I'll, I'll watch it again. Yeah, I, I will watch it again too because it was yeah. that fun of a movie, yeah. and it, I was a lot more willing to be forgiving about crap that happened in this movie. You yeah. know what I mean? So like, sounds... I, like certain things would change at certain moments in the movie. I'm like, I don't care. So the antagonist was improved drastically. No, the protagonist. No, 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 no. The guy who's the rich guy in the first one is head and shoulders 10 times better than the bad guy from this one yeah the Wait. only bad guy that was better was connor that's the only bad guy that's better exactly but jake gyllenhaal wasn't better than swayze well that's hard no. that's big no. shoes to fill hard to beat you're right especially with, with again, that role again if you were to ask me who's the better actor i'm i'm this may be controversial but i'm going with jake gyllenhaal i think yeah. he's a better actor oh that's not controversial i would agree with that 100 percent. but in this particular role Swayze's an icon. He's perfect. Yeah. He's a great actor. Gorgeous guy. He was always a good male leader than people to like. But but you know, Gyllenhaal's just a better actor. Anyway, uh, moving on. Go watch Roadhouse. Well, let's talk a little bit more about it next week, right? Let's watch it all together yeah. and then go over uh, it on the show. <clears throat> so let's watch that. I ain't watching that. Why not? <laughs> I, <don't know> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it was coming. <laughs> never seen the original there's a I black have, guy in never it never had any interest in watching Roadhouse. why not why not watch dude you're missing out i don't think i am you I'm are not, don't watch I, the old one Mark's watch the pretty, new one it's mcgregor you're gonna see him do fun. the walk i don't even like mcgregor like that you don't the have walk. to you don't I have hate, to. Hey, ryan, hold on ryan i hate conor mcgregor i loved him in this movie hate's a strong word i just care less about hate like, conor mcgregor i'm just saying i can't uh, stand conor mcgregor of outside I, of this movie I will say though, I did take someone's uh, recommendation for something, and I did watch something, and it is absolutely fucking dope. What? Oh, what? Hold on, we can hear it now. This is news you breaking. Some breaking news music. Breaking, <laughs> Wait, breaking news to... music. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 <Yes>. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So that's your breaking news music. Let's hear it. What did you watch? Man, Rhino, the Ninja Kamui. Bro, that shit is dope. What did I say, bro? Is that not fire? It's yeah. even okay. <laughs> Picture like a a man or a part of John Wick animated, but with samurai and ninjas. Okay, like, understood. Just dope. Good. All right, right. understood. It, dude, it's it's nasty. Seriously, you got to watch it. It's, it's better than Demon Slayer. Oh. Okay, that's all I needed to hear. Pull it at uh, let's, talk, here, let's talk about a little bit of Star it hasn't Wars. Finished, but right now for the start of it, it's it's pretty sick, bro. All right, I believe you. I believe you. Even I'll, par. I'll have to give Are it we a, going even par. By the Not way, better. by oh, the yeah. way, uh, Invincible has started back up. Very, very good with what's going on with Invincible right now. Whew. If you don't watch that show, watch it. Invincible is also top <clears> two. <throat> um, but you should watch Roadhouse, man. Yeah, don't watch the old one. I get that, but you should watch the new one. Watch no, the no, 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 no. Watch the old one. Watch yeah. the old one. Let's get watch the new one first, then go to the old one. See, if hold, on, it, hold on. If I had to recommend one of the two to Ryan right now, I would say the old one. Take take it down a couple notches. Your your mic is breaking up, buddy. When you get up there in the mic, you're you're cutting out. Just so you know. Just want to let you know. You don't even. You if, ain't I watch to, if I had I to recommend one of the two. Thank you. Let's hear it, Rhino. Which one of the two would you recommend? <laughs> if I had to recommend one of the two, it would be the original Roadhouse. I I have to agree. The original Roadhouse <laughs> just has a certain nostalgia about it. A certain, uh, how do they say it? The French say, je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Basically, it described Roadhouse 1 to you. It's so good. That, 
Roadhouse one it's is slower, definitely probably. better than this one, but this one, Conor McGregor's is incredible. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Uh, Rogue Squadron yeah, was originally like scrapped. But, uh, I'm not going to do that. You're going to do that, black guy. I'm we need that from that. you for the show. Thank you. Rogue Put Squadron. Nice coffee. Ori- <laughs> originally uh, scrapped from Disney development. It is now back in development at Disney. Yay. All right. Let's, let's really softly clap. <clears throat> I'm actually pretty excited about this. <laughs> okay. I don't know if we've gone full blown on this conversation on a show. Uh, I think we've touched on it a little bit, but we've always had to have that comparison of Marvel and Marvel TV and Star Wars and Star Wars TV. (sighs) With the Acolyte trailer that just dropped and looking at the production and the time that Star Wars is taking to put into their stories. And let's go shot for shot, show for show. Mm. Star Wars is absolutely crushing it. They I'm are pretty doing- sure there was a particular member of the show that called the the switching of the the leadership for Disney. And good job, Nello. That was huge. Oh, you! Can I get a clap, please? Yeah, sure. I got you. <laughs> Let's give him a little golf clap. There you go, buddy. All right. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I, and I and I do have say uh the person that called that definitely uh seems to be f- more right than wrong that's for sure marvel has not done anything to disprove that so now that i'm seeing this content being developed i mean we've got the acolyte we still have what's the one with jude law i always remember skeleton crew um, skeleton crew yep but uh, i think it's because there's no oversaturation i agree it's not like boom, 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 Marvel, 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 Marvel. You get it? They're like Star Wars. <laughs> I mean, when was the last time a Star Wars movie came out? It wasn't like 2017. It was the sequel trilogy, yeah. 2000, what? I think 19 was the last one, or 18, last maybe. One. Uh, Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. yeah. You got Solo. They were they were bad. Rogue I, I didn't one. enjoy them. I didn't enjoy I enjoy certain aspects of those movies, and I'm excited for the future, but like it and that's not even nostalgia because I thought I didn't like the prequel <clears throat> Where it went with Qui Gon and Anakin and Obi Wan, yeah. I didn't I like those. <clears throat> I didn't I like those either. Then I saw these for First Order, and I go back and watch the prequel trilogies, and I'm like, these don't compare. The prequel trilogies in the original, obviously, are in my opinion so much better. The original three or six, seven, nine, or right. whatever it is. The 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 sequel trilogies ended up having so many moments of we're gonna make this the most impossible, unsurvivable crazy odds to get out of and they're going to get out of it and i just was like this is so boring here's here's my question to you guys because with the sequel trilogy obviously disney disneyfied the shit out of it right yeah they were just obviously obviously the mouse had his hands on everything in the sequel trilogy Uh why is it (laughs) uh, uh, why is it that that star wars quickly learned their lesson with their concept being disneyfied and right at the ship but the mcu has not done that well i think it's first of all different leadership and the fact that disney pumped crazy amounts of money into marvel because the sequel trilogies were performing so badly and so marvel took all that and said let's just go content 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 and then uh oh there's another lesson learned meanwhile star wars who's sitting in timeout for their bad performance for the sequel trilogy is sitting there like okay so we're going to take a lot of time and write really good content here and make sure that it is really laser focused so i think one is benefiting from the other Keyword. and now i think uh marvel is taking their turn to be in timeout and we're going to start seeing that churn in a different direction in terms of content and then they're going to get a stick thrown in the spokes when james gunn and the boys show up with dc keyword yeah. writing keyword writing that's Some it keyword, keyword writing man hey uh, who yeah you're 100 right me over there can you do your boy a favor give me a live action ronin bob Iger. bob Iger. live action ronin make it happen the star wars ronin you mean oh yeah he is he is so addicted to that one episode of uh it's so good. Why would it, it, it was the it was the best of the whole first season? It was and, and about, second season. I don't care about yeah. Star Wars. If you made something like that, I'd be all in. The only other one that I think compares to me in that first season of Visions was The Elder. That was really good too. 
Well, to be honest with you, I think you're going to get a lot of the elements of Ronin in the Acolyte because even just the trailer, you see a lot more Kung Fu style hand to hand combat, which we have not had in any Star Wars so far. You have oh, not seen any very, of that Kung Fu style of hand to hand combat. Very into that. Very yeah. into that. And your girl from uh, the, the Matrix. Matrix was in it. Wasn't Donnie Yen in a, in a Star Wars movie? Yes, he was in uh, Star Wars. Oh my he was God. Rogue One. Rogue, Rogue One. One. He was. Yeah. The, I am the false. The false is with me. I am yeah. the false. The false is with me. But that even then, that wasn't kung fu style. That was just. That was just normal fucking. You know, badassery is what that he was, was. He was definitely doing kung fu. It's the Asian Donnie, version Donnie of Yen. space kung fu, whatever the hell you want to call it. But anyway, I I, I definitely agree, and I think the Star Wars has been crushing it. So Rogue Squadron getting the green light doesn't surprise me. After that acolyte trailer, I was like. What is going on? Star oh, Wars is so yeah. sick, dude. It's so it. sick. They don't need movies. If they keep doing this, forget it. Forget the movies. I'm going to disagree with you there. I think movies definitely, just like in Marvel, are a good culmination of a lot of story plot lines and a good way to end certain things and then move forward with something different. But Rogue Squadron is about the X-Wing fighters, right? The Death Star. Uh, right? Yes, yes, you know, yes. Right? The the X-Wing fighters, yes. Right. So that's, that's going to be good. I wouldn't mind watching it. If I may comment real quickly, too, I think another thing that, that Star Wars has benefited from is a lot of their shows have been after major movie plot lines. Right. Uh, you know, uh, Andor was after, or not after, excuse me, it was, it was before, but Mandalorian, after the the uh, original trilogy. Uh, we had Ahsoka, which is after the original trilogy. Uh, we're getting the Acolyte, which is before the original trilogy, but it's still, like, it's not tied into anything. I think that's what they're benefiting from greatly, too. Well, I'm well, uh, uh, also, just just to 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 comment to that, WandaVision is after Endgame. You know, Captain America and the Winter Soldier is after Endgame. Hawkeye, Hawkeye is all. It's all. I I, I I'm I'm going to disagree with you because they're after that as well. Yeah. Yeah. but yeah, you, you may be right. Not, you may be right. You may wrong be right. when it comes to Star Wars having just better writing, or it's just a fresh idea. You're right. getting a Sith perspective that you've never gotten. You're like, holy shit. Right. What what made these guys? What made Anakin really choose the and dark you've, side? So you've got so some really hardcore fans that I'm sure are going to know everything about the acolyte and of what's going to happen before course. that. However, there's a lot more people this, out there. This this story hasn't really been told yet, though. Too. That's another good thing. Well, it, to what I was going to say before I so rudely interrupted was that a lot of the stories <laughs> happening in the Marvel TV shows, people have seen an iteration of that in a comic, and they have something to compare it to. There is canon in lore for Star Wars too. There's books upon books upon books and so right. on and so forth. Uh, anyway, uh, I think Star Wars is going to crush it. Who have you all seen the Acolyte trailer? Not Ryan, notwithstanding. No, I have not. <sighs> but you know what's funny is I'll probably watch that doing? before I watch anything out of the MCU. Ooh, well, it's going to be lonely shows for you where you're just sitting there looking in a foggy camera. That's cool. <laughs> Me and my fog just sit here. <laughs> oh, I love how he owns it too. So I have to um, uh, DC. Let's talk about DC. Got a couple things to talk about with that. Uh, first of all, I saw Aquaman too. Um, I'm sorry. Again. Yeah, I agree. It's okay. Like there's so many other worse movies. There are worse MCU movies. There are worse Star Wars movies. There's a lot of movies that we can talk about that are much worse than Aquaman too. I mean, is it over the top? The story about the man who lives in Atlantis and talks to fish. Yes, it's a little over the top. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like Aquaman, he fucks fish. <laughs> he's got uh, uh, a lot more lore and stuff built into his movies than most of the freaking MCU movies that are coming out. I mean, I love Jason Momoa. I think he's charismatic. He's definitely leaning into the silly side of him as a person. I think they're giving him some liberties with how he's playing Aquaman, but I, I didn't think it was bad. I didn't watch the movie and go, I'll never watch that again. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, uh, I'm just, you know, you guys know why I have such a big love for Aquaman, but I was, I was going to say, I think there's a it, respectfully, I think there's a little bit of bias because Aquaman is one of your favorite DC characters. So I, I do respect, I do respect the bias there. Uh, I just, it, it was another DCEU production for me, and it it sure. it fell short on a lot of areas. I'd take it over um, Black Adam. 
<laughs> I mean, okay. There's really Marvel. not much. There's really not much I wouldn't take over Black Adam. You know what's funny? I'll take like, this bullet to the head over a nuclear bomb. Yeah, it yeah. sounds great. That's kind of what Jason Momoa reminds me of. He's just like the rock, but in the same character. But much time. better. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Um for me, The Rock's a little more entertaining, I feel. Wow. Oh, wow. oh see, I disagree there. Guy. That is surprising to hear, but I, I don't agree, but it's surprising to hear. Positive comment on the show. Um, what? Actually, The Rock had positive Rock comments had on the last comment. show because he's back in his heel wrestling. The yeah. Rock is crushing it right now in terms of leaning into what made him The Rock. Anyway, not going to, uh, go ahead. The Brahma Bull? Batman 2, delayed one year. Why? production i'm assuming i uh, there's a there's a question that i i asked i wonder if they're doing this uh in advance of the dcu coming out to kind of play him in a little bit in the alt worlds thing doesn't penguin come either, out either oh either there's that, that or the penguin by the way too let's talk about that before we keep moving i was the, i was just gonna say i i wonder i wonder if because i it, it, it's it, it's this isn't a, a a negative discourse on you know the original the batman movie but i wonder if they're wanting to delay it to so that batman doesn't take away any of the attention from the new dcu like they want to get the dcu on the ground and, and up and running you know what i mean right possibly well, before doing a new batman which so, doesn't tie into the main universe yeah i was just gonna ask what penguin is this is this the one from the batman yep. that just came yeah, out Colin, yeah, Colin, 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 Colin yep and it's like a mafia show. That's what it looks like. It's I'm all just, about, I'm all about that shit. Hundred percent. I'm all about that. Yeah. And it's definitely very interesting. But if I ever get to see Colin, Colin Farrell go, wah, wah. <laughs> 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 oh, to become my favorite show ever. Uh, anyway, Iceberg Lounge is probably going to play a huge part of that. Obviously. I think I think DC's doing doing the right things. They're moving in the right direction. Slowing it down. Yeah. Last thing to talk about before we go on a little bit of a break is uh Rhino, you brought this up before we press record, is that the all signs are pointing towards Jake Jisenballs being Batman. <laughs> Gillen <Yeah>. Hall. <laughs> what did I say? I I'm a hundred percent in favor of this. Gillen Hall. I'm a hundred he so it, think about it from this perspective. In terms of physicality, he's obviously got it. Yep. Uh, in terms of a a pretty face, a pretty dark face for Bruce Wayne, he's got it. Yep. Uh, we all know that he can switch his acting style up. Yep. So in terms of depth, we're not worried there. Have you seen so Bubble, Boy? I... Bubble Boy? <laughs> Bubble Boy. Bubble Boy. A man's got range. I I just I I don't I don't have an issue with this. I'm excited about it. I'm excited for him to be Batman. I well, it's not confirmed, but I would not bat an eye. I would go see any Batman movie with Jake Gyllenhaal, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Kind of want to see Alan Richardson do it. Just be a me too. That would be cool too. Batman just that would running be cool around. Too. Oh, so Thank here's you. a quick question for the group: Alan Richardson or Jake Gyllenhaal? I'd go Alan Richardson. In terms of acting, Jake Gyllenhaal. That's not a question. Because because Alan Richardson is definitely looks the part. He could play any superhero you want, but his acting is a little vanilla, buddy. He like doesn't. If, I agree with you. Jill and Hall. No. Like we're just talking. Jill and Hall. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Jill and Hall. I mean, and if I, and I want I want more realism. So Batman is a guy who goes and beats people asses people's asses in the middle of the night, and he doesn't kill them. Okay. Alan Richardson. Anybody he punches, I'm probably going. That guy's dead. Alan Richardson should be. <laughs> He would be a good Aquaman. He's got that. I agree. Body. He Get would. If they're, gonna if, yes, they're gonna, he would. yes, he would. If they're gonna take Long Momoa. Hair. If they're gonna take Momoa and make him Lobo, which would be amazing. Like, yeah. Richon would be an absolutely perfect physicality and acting wise, Aquaman. Because Aquaman in the DC comics, kind of vanilla. Right. Vanilla. But if you if you look at it from a, a Bruce Wayne perspective, too, he's he's a very quiet, awkward dude. And <laughs> what does Jake Gyllenhaal do best? Quiet, awkward. Yeah, he does do a good job of that. Uh, okay, so let's take our first break of the day. Then we're going to get back into the, uh, what's the name of that segment? Yes or no? Hit it and quit it? Uh, agree or disagree, but yeah, we can do either or. Ooh, hit <laughs> it agree and quit or it. disagree. So we will be right back. See you on the other side of this break. I'm going to run with this hit it and quit it. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening to whatever ad you just listened to. I'm sorry we had to put you through that, but we're here to uh, bring you back and, and you know, let's get back into this flow of talking about comics and things that are happening, okay? Uh, that being said, we have another iteration of... Agree or disagree? Sorry. 
Rhino Alberts. Why did we have to use that? One? I don't know. It's the one I went with, man. Don't ask questions. Rhino. Wait, I, I do feel like to be asked though. All right, so uh, let's hit it, Rhino. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another iteration of Agree or Disagree. First question I have on the docket for you guys is with all the recent studio mass layoffs, constant oh. delays in production, and AAA game flops, agree or disagree, GTA 6 is the most important video game release of the last decade. Disagree. <laughs> GTA could release a turd and everybody would buy it. Disagree. Wouldn't matter. Ryan? He knows. I think I'm going to disagree as well. Yeah. What okay. about you? The, the only reason why I pose the question is because this is going to be the biggest game release that we've had in a very long time in terms of anticipation, in terms of the uh, the demographic that is going to play it. I mean, you have a very large cult following for GTA 6. I think if this game were to flop, it would be a huge black eye for video games. So I'm actually going to agree with this. You know what? And that's one of the things I was thinking about was I was going to agree because this game is supposed to be one of the few games or the only game ever that we've had on like a console. Where you're supposed to be able to go inside of every building, do like all the GTA things and actually have the whole world actually playable to you. And Grand Theft Auto is the one who's changed the game before with three and they're doing it again with six. So I, mm, I might have to switch that to agree. My point. Exactly. They've always mm. said the same thing. Oh, because so, the the original GTA was just a dude walking around like this and just shooting a. a, a, a but that was a, also PlayStation One though, so. Yeah. No, even computer. I'm talking even before PlayStation on the computer. Yeah. All right, next one. Next question: With the recent success of the Spider-Man franchise on PlayStation and the announcements of more Marvel uh, branded uh, video games coming out, agree or disagree? PlayStation will keep up with anything Microsoft has to throw at them. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll agree, agree. Pointing at something that I've been pointing at for for weeks on the show, something that they've already done, Hell Divers, they're they're definitely keeping up. There's no joke. I mean, if it's in terms of Marvel, yeah, for sure, agree. Nello, Hell Divers is amazing. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I think the the fields are. Or did you mean strictly Marvel content? No, no, no. I just, I just meant in terms of video game releases. I mean, obviously we have Hell Divers, but you have the acquisition of the the Call of Duty franchise by Microsoft, one of the biggest studios in the world. Everyone fears that Xbox is going to take over the gaming universe with all of these Marvel franchises now coming out on Sony. Sony should be able to keep up with Microsoft in terms of anything that they they release going yeah. forward. I don't think we're going to get that world where it's just Xbox, it's just PlayStation. I mean, it's the fact right that here. we're still having the conversation shows that Sony's definitely doing okay in terms of that. God of War, Spider-Man, they have so many, uh, like, uh, yeah. what's the one your brother <laughs> likes so much? Uh, Horizon, oh, Zero right. Dawn. Horizon, last yeah. 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 Ryan, Ryan, do you agree or disagree? What was the question again? <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> All right, moving on to the next question. With the rumors <laughs> circulating, <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to listen to that. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I mean, Call of Duty's the only thing they got. <laughs> With the rumors circulating around Jake Gyllenhaal as the DCU's Batman, agree or disagree? Batman does not need to be the focal point of the DCU. Completely agree. It depends what you do with Superman. And you're, are you doing Justice League? What, what, like, what are you doing? Are you just doing single one-offs? I'm going to disagree. Well, I, I think they are eventually going to get to a point where they do a Justice League, you know, DC character mashup style movie. They, they have to because they, ha they we still have Avengers movies coming out, so they have to release something Justice League related. So then Batman is a critical role to the whole plan. He, he's, he's critical, but he doesn't need to be the main focal point. Agree or disagree? Disagree. I disagree. I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, agree he does not because let's look at DC as a company and the movies that they put out and let's put Batman compared to literally anybody. If there's Marvel fatigue, there's Batman fatigue. There's been so many Batman. Find something else, somebody else. I think they could go with a Flash. They could go with a Green Lantern. They have so many A tier or S tier characters that they could follow with. Does Batman need to play a major part? Absolutely. No doubt about that. Yes, Batman yes, 100%. But does he need to be the guy that's the driving force behind everything? 
No, I don't think he does. I mean, let's look at what Marvel did. They didn't have anybody step up in that front seat. The connector to literally everybody was Phil Coulson. And Phil Coulson then eventually passed oh, the torch shit. to Iron Man. So, Dropping no, knowledge. they don't need to jump back and forth. And Phil Coulson, for a while, was the guy that you freaked out with when you saw him show up on screen. Like, oh, shit, there's Phil Coulson. You know, and what's happening next? Yep. Him. Oh, hey, just call a shield with a strategic homeland intervention enforcement and logistics division. Well, that's a mouthful. Just call a shield. Oh, shit, he said shield. And then he'd show up for Thor. And then he showed up for other heroes. And you were just like, that's the guy. And he was the one who brought it together. So, no, I disagree. Batman, while vital, while necessary, does not need to take a forefront. As a matter of fact, I'd liken it to um, the idea for Spawn now, right? They have the idea that Spawn is not going to be the main character in his own movie. He's going to show up. He's going to kick ass. Don't follow Batman every fucking where he goes. Let's let him show up, <clears throat> drop that knowledge. Let's let him show up, drop off the billion dollar toys, show up, say, here's what we're going to do to stop these guys, and then move on with or without him. I don't think you need to How follow him. you have he... a Spawn movie without Spawn? It's not there. without Spawn. So let me, let me hear. Oh. Okay, so go ahead, Ryan. Okay, let I me... want to just jump in on a second to talk about what you were just saying. Um, to me, Iron Man was the guy who brought everything together, not Phil Coulson. Because honestly, I don't really... Phil Coulson, you said that. And I mean, I get that he's the reason the Avengers, they use him for whatever, for that excuse. But to me, I felt like Iron Man was the biggest part of that. He's the biggest star. He's the Batman. I, Iron, Iron Man. Iron Man was only Iron Man until Phil Coulson, and then Iron Man became Avengers yeah. Iron Man after right. Phil Coulson. But Amen. he was still kind of yeah, tying but, everything together. Though. But Coulson's the guy who brought everyone yeah. together, and then he dies. Yeah. So like twenty other movies, where was he? You know what I'm saying? Like, sure, but that's what I'm saying. Is like, but that was the, that was the flame that lit the the fire. Okay, right. and I was going to now my next point. Out of all the movies that we've ever gotten. Batman's the only one that's ever been good, for the most part. Yeah, sure. Well, I disagree tried- with that wholeheartedly because we've, we've had Henry Cavill Superman. I didn't like those movies. Exactly. No one really did because who cares about Superman? In all honesty, he, who does he really face? You know what I mean? Like, to you me, really the only, only person Superman inside movie. of that ru- inside of that world that people can more slowly relate to, rather than being a billionaire, is Bruce Wayne. He's a human being. So, I mean, who are you gonna have? Wonder Woman? or the the martian i don't think you need any of those main characters and to my point that i was making to you about the spawn movie with the joke is like look at look at dark knight joker heath ledger is the one reason that movie is a mega mega success he was the most polarizing portion of that movie he's there for five minutes joker was the focal point of dark knight it wasn't batman it was right. the Joker was the focal point of that movie. That and that's that's the point that I'm making. Batman is obviously going to have a huge role in the DCU. He does not need to be that dude, is the question. Yeah. Nah, I don't think he kind of does. Okay. Nah, moving on. All right. He's next next question. Possibly. With the rumors circulating around the potential cameos surrounding Deadpool and Wolverine, we've gotten uh cable, we've gotten James Marsden now coming out and talking about maybe the potential with uh uh um Cyclops being in there as well. Is the MCU going to overdo it with Deadpool and cameos? Agree or disagree? Yes, agree, hundred yeah. percent. Said this last week to a to an extent. I agree as well. But if you look at like X Men like episodes and Marvel episodes and cartoons, it's always about like people just you, you're fighting. Everybody shows up and then it just disappears. I don't think there's anything wrong with all those cameos. I disagree. How about, okay. Wait, wait. Right. We just said you know what just threw in my mind. We were talking about this guy a lot, and you just mentioned James Marsden playing Cyclops, Alan Rickston playing Cyclops. Yeah, the X Men. He, he could play Cyclops. He yeah, could play. Cyclops. Yeah. Oh, I'm ready. Yeah. Okay, so move. Sorry, go, 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 go. All go, right. Go, go. So the next one is with the recent news that an all AI video game failed due to the absence of human talent. Agree or disagree? This is a long term win for the people who are opposed to AI in future media publications. Oh, oh that's a, such a loaded question. I, not, yeah, very, not, very loaded. Very loaded question. Like, da, 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 da. Let's just stick to gaming. Let's stick to gaming, right? Let's well, no, this is, this is a gaming and, and movies, agree or disagree. But in terms of people who are opposed to AI, we just had a company that literally tried to produce an entire video game with only artificial intelligence, and the video game I, failed. I agree. Can, and I, I only say that because I listen to, like, YouTube all day, and a lot of these people like me too. YouTube stories. A lot of them started to use AI to generate stories or do whatever, and they're absolutely horrible. They don't make a lot of sense. They're terrible. I'm like, bro, really? Yeah. Okay. So if if it's its first iteration right now and it already doesn't make sense, 
in 10 years, what's it going to do? It's not going to need Nello it. Was, it. Nello, is, is 10 years long term? I, I don't know. Like long term is a relative question because you you could be here today. You could well, be no, that, that, no, that's that's why I, I was genuinely I wasn't trying to be a smart ass. I'm genuinely asking you: Is ten years is long term to, to you? Yeah, I guess. Okay. In technology sense, yes. With with it ever rapidly changing. Um, let me first off kind of pick that question apart a little bit. The people who are opposed to AI. I don't give a shit about their opinion. I don't care if they think it's a win or not. Okay. Because people, no matter what, no matter what argument, if they have an opinion, they're going to find a way that their opinion wins no matter what happens. Do I think it's good that an all AI game failed? Fuck yes. I don't think, I, I, I think it's better to have the people telling the stories, right? To put AI to make a game for everybody is fucking lazy. And look, read the shirt, Dungeon Master. If I put my by campaign together by ai you would know it it would suck you wouldn't show up but because i write the story and at the table let's say the four of us are at the table i'm getting a hit from somebody like like nello i see a plot point nello really likes it i can play into that ai is going to go here's what's going to happen no matter what you do or it's going to hear something and then go way left or way right i think keeping people in your games, in your art, and everything is a very, very important. Whether it's a win or not, who gives a fuck? Because it's if it failed, it failed. But I still think it's very important because, like, if this show was run by AI, wouldn't be good. You'd get this. And I guess, I guess that that probably was the gist of of yeah. Uh, Chet's question is the <laughs> the people who oppose AI are the ones that are arguing the human element that is involved with with production going forward, and we just now saw something fail because yeah. of the lack of the human uh, element. And I think I think that's correct. I, I agree. I think it's a good thing that it failed. Because I don't think AI belongs there. People's opinions on whether or not they feel they won or lost, I could give a respect. Shit. Respect, respect. Next question. Because that AI thing is AI, they don't really do like the detail and so all that. Like really, they don't pay attention yeah. to small yeah. things. Like like I mean? AI generated photos where you yeah. have seven they fingers. Just have like yeah. A picture. <laughs> <laughs> like but out of the people who see it, some people won't pick up on those seven fingers. Anyway, next question. Next question. Uh, with the acolyte right around the corner, agree or disagree? Star Wars can still successfully deliver Jedi Sith material by switching up the content and delivery. Uh, and if, uh, if if yeah. I may, I'll go I'll go into I'll go into detail a little bit more. We're not okay. seeing Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker still. Uh, okay, that was going to be my point. Hundred yes. percent agree. Get away from Star Wars. I've said this on the show several times. Massive universe in a galaxy far, far away, and we focus on six fucking people and their mm-hmm. lineage. So I agree with you. Yep. Yep. Like, agree. You such a big, agree. If such a vast like sea of characters, let's go. Yeah. Give me something new. I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> <laughs> the the next question, yeah, very very quickly, because we can we can fly through this next question. We can fly through this next question very quickly because it's related to the one I just asked. Uh, after the news of Billy D. Williams being open to the return of Star Wars, agree or disagree? Star Wars can be just as, if not more, successful without the return of any of the OG characters, regardless of Jedi or Sith. Agree or disagree? First, first of all, he said he would come back for a lot of a money. lot of money. Yeah. First of all, Billy D, we don't want you to come back for any money. Han <laughs> is so played out at this point. I would pay you exorbitant am- amounts of money to not show up and say Chewie hit the hyperdrive. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about Lando Calrissian showing up in Star Wars at all. I don't. I don't want any of those major characters. So this is maybe an emphatic yes for me. Move the fuck on. And in an imperial strike from the heavens, Billy D. Williams' character no longer exists, and the Empire <laughs> flew away. Oh, and then it's over. Right. So, what real money are you going to get? Right. Not necessary. Not necessary. And Thank are you, you okay? Are you, here? you don't get fun. <laughs> Thank you. We got two left. We got two left right here. Uh, with the positive you. response, with the pro- the positive response to both Dune One and Dune Two, agrees agree or disagree? Sourcing new movie material from older novels will eventually and successfully replace the reboot era we are currently in. Disagree. Isn't that technically a reboot? You're getting something yeah. already written and disagree. It. No, disagree too because they've been making books out of movies. I mean, Harry Potter, freaking. But we we have not we have not seen a whole lot of novel based movies <laughs> lately. Who's the horror guy? Stephen King novels. I mean, I mean it's happening. I, I see where you're coming from, but I, I disagree. And to that, to Ryan's point, Dune is a 100% reboot. 
of an, of an yeah, old. Yeah, when I wrote movie. that question, I completely forgot that there was an 80s version of that movie. So, chat starring Sting. Anyway, next question. That's next question. Looked. This is the last one of the agree or disagree lineup. <laughs> with all of the, with all of the, and this one, I think this one's going to be a little bit controversial. So I'm excited to ask this one. With all of the consistent success Christopher Nolan has had over the years and the continuous positive support of all of his actors, agree or disagree, Christopher Nolan is the best director in Hollywood right now. No. Agree. Agree. No. So who who's your guy? Well, no, let's let's get the answers from everybody. So disagree. Uh, I, I I agree. I agree. Um, I don't know. I'm going to disagree, but I can't okay. really think of an actor right now because honestly, I don't know too much of Christopher Nolan stuff. I know he did uh, Tenet, but he also Tenet, did Oppenheimer, the Batman trilogy, the Batman trilogy. I'll give him Interstellar. Oppen Never seen it. Come on, guys. You think I'm watching that? I ain't got ain't nobody got time for you're that. Interstellar is actually a phenomenal movie. No. All right. So who's your director that you're putting over Christopher uh Nolan? Noah. I mean, this is maybe a, just a personal thing, but I like Tarantino. All day, I was gonna say night. Tarantino's kind I'm of sorry. Been forever. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tarantino now this all... doesn't take anything away from Tarantino. He makes wonderful movies, but he also comes out with a movie every seven years. And I don't care tarantino to me has two good movies and one of them is kill bill one and two and the other one is pulp fiction the other ones i don't really care for i don't i know he has witty dialogue i know he likes to show shocking violence at times i don't get the hype i don't get it i also think scorsese is better like there's a couple of them out there that i think are better. oh too. scorsese oh. hasn't put anything good out in years dude yeah, but you're, you're talking about a whole body of work man I, i'm still gonna no, say no 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 i'm not talking about a whole body of work i'm talking about today if you had to pick a director to, to make a film for you today not back in 1989 i'm talking about today christopher if nolan I'm, is the best director in hollywood if i'm having a, a director put a movie together for me <sighs> that's between james gunn Matt Reeves and Chris Nolan. I take Seth Rogen at that point. I think it would make a great movie. Okay. Uh, so that's going to do it for agree or disagree. Thank you, Rhino, for putting those questions together for us. Let's get into a little bit more because we got to go through a bunch before we uh, before we call it a day here. So I want to kind of run through some of these. Baldur's Gate DLC scrapped by the studio. Baldur's Gate. Game of Why? the year. Game based on D&D. Um this is a big win in my opinion because um the studio came to the developers that made baldur's gate and go hey, look how good we did man do a dlc do a dlc and they're like why it has nothing to do with our story you want dlc so you can sell another 40 dollar yep. dlc to our game and yep. the game developer came out and, and name dropped the owner of the studio and said, fuck that guy. He doesn't care about the story or the people that are working on it. We're not doing a DLC. We started about two or three months into development of it. Nobody was passionate about it. Nobody cared about it. The only driving force behind the DLC was quarterly reports being sent from the, the game producers and the studio heads to the developers. And the developers are like, we don't care we just made this massive game during covid it made a shit ton of money and did emphatically well so the studio can go fuck themselves bring in the ai bring in the, bring the ai <laughs> honestly honestly i i agree with this decision 100 i i love it because if you have if your actual developer is looking at you and saying listen dude we're not passionate about this it's not it doesn't feel right and that's actually word for word what they said it doesn't feel right then why would you pump the money into it why would you want to alienate your fan base by giving them dog shit that doesn't compare to the original content and why Thank would you, you tarnish your original product you see how much money yeah, you will yeah, but see, here's the thing though I, I love it it's almost like bringing it back to the days when you bought a game and you got what you got and yes, you got yes, to play it yes. And, you, and then like that sec that DLC is now that second game that you get. Like for me, keep adding and adding on just to keep hitting my pockets is kind of annoying. It's one of the things that kill the division for me. Not to like, mention consumers are picking up on yeah, that. Yeah, like we get that. Like Preach. just make a good game. Let me run through it, bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm. 
Honestly, you know, and, and to, to co-sign on that point a little bit, I would rather play an original game through again from the beginning than get some bullshit DLC. Oh, exactly. Right. Something that doesn't really do anything. Now, don't yeah. get me wrong. There's some times where I would love to continue on some uh, story. If you're going to make it something good and something that's going to actually be compelling to play, I'm all for it. But just to, hey, man, make it so you can have sex with two polar bears now. <laughs> <laughs> now so so there's it's also you're looking at two different animals you're looking at a narrative driven one player to two player game that is purposefully driven by you the player through the narrative how are you going to dlc on that in a meaningful way when it's a shooter like destiny oh here's this bad guy he does a couple of different jumps and he's going to throw other stuff at you but you know you're going to get cooler armor you're going to get cooler weapons you're going to be able to do more stuff that i'm a little bit more forgiving on than stuff that's just clearly haphazardly thrown together to get my 30 bucks what's up Noah? what about the diablo 4 dlc where you're trying to fix the game through the dlc i I, is that not a that's, different that's type an of... excellent point and uh, we do need to very talk very good that. question yeah because diablo is coming up with major major overhauls to a lot of things and they are also bringing a lot more content story content multiplayer content itemization content We're changing the game through that and i can't disagree with that because i wanted diablo i love diablo and at this point i get all the complaints that are having from the community and i stand by them do I still have fun? Yeah. Am I a streamer having to play that game for 10 hours? <laughs> no, I'm not. No. So I enjoy it a little bit more than the people who are extremely vocal about it. Am I also looking forward to all these changes that are happening? Hell yeah. I think it's going to be great. But I think the game's great now. But there's a, there's a huge difference between the two, though. Dia- Diablo 4 is a massive online multiplayer game. That's what I was just about to yes. say. Ball- Baldur's, Baldur's Gate is not that. It's story-driven. It's entirely story-driven. What was that, Jack? His his Boldors. Bell. He's Bell. Oh, Hodor's Gate. Oh, Hodor. Hodor. Uh, tell them how you pronounce Nutella. Nutella. It's oh. Nutella, and the it's founders the- of Nutella would tell yeah, you it's Nutella. Nutella. <laughs> Anyways, just- moving on. Moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> I definitely touched touched the hot button there. <laughs> By the way, Nutella sounds amazing right now. It's Nutella. Uh, anyway, that's. <laughs> Uh, you know what, Ryan? You, you keep saying Baldur's Gate how you want to say Baldur's Baldur. Gate. <laughs> uh, so, uh, there is an un- unannounced... Uh, first of all, there was a um, a trailer for the 1943 Captain America game with Captain America and uh, Black Panther. And this is T'Chaka, not T'Challa. Uh, no, it's not T'Chaka. It's the one before T'Chaka. What's his name? Uh, King... Oh, my God. <laughs> King... Um, it's sorry, it's so... In the comic books, it's the it's the Black Panther before T'Chaka. It's T'Chaka's Literally, father. I can't I remember his name. What his name is, but that's great. That makes a, ho- a yeah. heck of a lot more sense. But yeah. um, I- I'm here for it. That game looks interesting. I think it's going to be one of those weird turn based. I don't know. We'll see. But a uh, trailer came out for that. Looks interesting narrative wise. I don't really like the way, and I, I I'm, I'm going to say this out loud. I don't like the way they portray Captain America in 90 percent of the games he's in. I agree with that. I agree. I, with that. I think they. I think they make him too, uh, like too patriotic boy. And in this one, he's like, "We're in Nazi Germany, and there's three super soldiers." And he goes, "And that's too too many." Captain America would not say that shit. No, he would or, not say that shit. In in the trailer, he he bursts in. He he hits uh, Black Panther with a shield. He's like, "I'm here on behalf of the United States government." When the hell has he ever said that? Only when he was first created. Yeah. Other than that, you never heard him talk about that shit. Right, he's the number one guy to rebel against the government in Civil War, so you're talking about the wrong guy. Anyway, there's an unannounced the, video game for Marvel that the trailer is dropping tomorrow. If you're listening to this now, probably today, the 27th of March. The Black Panther in the movie is Ed Zuri. Ed Zuri. Just yeah, to, it was, it's T'Chaka's father. I couldn't remember his damn name. Uh, I mean, but yeah, I... Thank you. Thank that's you. because he went out to get a gallon of milk and never came back. Oh Ooh. my god. Oh, but you can make that joke, though. Yeah, you can. Good for you. Uh, anyway, so uh, un- unannounced Marvel game trailer happening tomorrow. Thoughts? And the uh, the art has T'Challa. It has Star-Lord. It has Doctor Strange. It has a lot of well-known superheroes. Could this, could this be a what-if video game? 
I don't want a what if video game. I want Ultimate Marvel's Alliance Ultimate Alliance 4, baby. Oh, yeah. man. Is that like Marvel vs. Capcom type stuff? No, no. that no, is a no, four person no. squad based RPG. I'm down. And you could, like in the last one, which was pretty awesome, but was Switch exclusive, which yeah, kind of bugged me. Uh, they eventually got DLC with the Fantastic Four. You could go in, you could also unlock Dr. Doom, and you can yep. combo like the thing and Johnny Storm can do combo moves. I mean, you could do it with anybody. You had Deadpool, and then you could have Doctor Strange and they could combo together. It's incredible. That yep. sounds good. Fun fact that's the first game me and my wife beat together. Oh, Ultimate. Oh, Wars. that's so sweet. Shout there he love you, boo. Um, that's awesome. Yep. Megan does not have the patience. Oh, so we were getting after it. It was actually dope because it was me, my two brothers, and her. See, Darcy Chris. does have the patience, but she plays video games like my two-year-old son would. <laughs> Ouch. All right, moving on from that subject. My two year um, let's let's talk about this. Uh, actually, we don't have a lot to talk about for the rest of uh this with with the terms of Marvel stuff kind of here there. Has anyone watched any X-Men 97? <gasps> yes, no. I've watched the first two That's episodes. Episode. Okay. Uh so listen. Want, I just want is... to some impressions before oh, we go too Hold crazy. On. Let him talk. Can I get a pause? What is X-Men 97? X-Men 97. The... You remember the old, old school? One, yeah. -na -na -na. That one. Yes. The reason yes. you love that riff. I thought that was already out. It's not out. It's coming out right now. There are two episodes out on Disney Plus right now. There are two episodes. I've watched one of the two. Okay. I have seen them both as That's well. Good. Yep. I, I, I just watched the second one today. Um, let's just go some some general, no spoilery comments at the end of the original x-men 97 professor x dies but he really goes off to space um and he is dead and the x-men are carrying on without him under <laughs> under cyclops's leadership these are quotation fingers by the way the pauses are quotation <laughs> fingers <laughs> yes they are um i think this show has the potential to be excellent if if you can overlook a lot of the things that happened with the old school x-men 97 in terms of the way characters are voiced some of their attitudes people have had issues with and i'll say it out loud gambit they've had issues wolverine. with morph Rimmel and they've both. had issues with wolverine um my comments to those people is get over it if yeah. i may i thought i would like hate morph i thought i'm like off oh, no i loved him i liked it <laughs> loved him I, I had the problem with the other two i just can't get over wolverine's voice right it's not steve bloom it's, i get it it's just not wolverine he period. sounds different and he like i different. don't like gambit being that much of a you know anyway my my opinion of the show is this uh i was able to quickly because I went into it knowing that there were people that, that had problems with the, the new voice actors. I went into it and I, I quickly got over that because I feel like this cartoon is way more story driven than the original was. The original, like you got like, oh, okay, cool, a quick 20 minute story. And then you had no idea what the next episode was. This yeah. one is really captivating. And that, I mean, that's saying something because I'm an adult watching a cartoon. So so, th well, so far through through two episodes, this the story is really, really driving it's really oh. captivating so back Welcome in the anime, in the buddy. 90s when when the x-men came out there were a lot of other shows that were kind of in that animation style and were very popular Iron like Man. gargoyles uh ghostbusters turtles teenage mutant ninja turtles and every single one of those shows was self-contained episodes you could watch an episode it would begin and and that whole thing would be wrapped up. The, the story would not be a continuation. X-Men 97, or X-Men in the original, was the first show ever to not only go over controversial things, but continue that narrative week in and week out. The story would continue. And in season one, which, spoiler alert, Morph gets killed. It's killed and yeah. you never saw a character in any show get killed in a meaningful way to where, oh my god, they were dead. There was a part of an episode where Wolverine is like, I will avenge you, and he's over there getting drunk at Morph's grave. Yep. I mean, eventually they wanted Morph back, so they brought him back, but that's neither here nor there. But X-Men really broke the mold when it came to telling that story. They talk about segregation. They talk about racism. They talk about being wrongfully imprisoned. They went over a lot of hot-button issues that young kids 
kids probably didn't understand at the time, but it was something that that kind of opened your eyes, and that's what made it so successful. And 97 is continuing that same sort of thing. And my boy Magneto. Damn, I, I thought you I'm were going to tell you else, something. Though. First of all, my favorite X-Man is Cyclops. I'll say that. I'm going to get out here on the show and say my favorite X-Man forever has been Cyclops. And the way they show Cyclops in this show, huh, major yeah. win for Cyclops I mean, fans. He's not the way that he's been in a lot of comics. No, no he is He is not a He is not a, a uh, get beat down instantly. Like I, I feel like the original Cyclops was like Vegeta, where yeah. he'd show up, he'd do something cool for three seconds, and all of a sudden, bam, he's out. Yep, all of a sudden, oh my glasses. Sorry, Vilma. Yeah. You're out of the fight. <laughs> yeah, this Cyclops, this Cyclops came to throw hands with yes, people, and I appreciate that a lot. Uh the, the only complaint that I have about Magneto is that he looks like somebody's strong independent auntie. <laughs> <laughs> I, am I Jack, am I wrong? I mean, they did 80s his hair a lot. I'm not I'm not going to agree because I oh love me some God, Magneto, so and he has the best moments so far in these two episodes. Hundred percent. Far and away, Magneto's arc right now is the reason this show is so GD good. You know I what? agree with that a thousand percent. I, I just that's the only complaint that I have so far. As I just am not a fan of his appearance. I really am yeah. not because you know he's got was- he's got real strong like you know that aunt you have that single uh-huh. that smokes a pack of Camel Reds every day kind of vibes to him. He definitely does. You know what I'm talking about though. That movie I'm talking about. It's the 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 adventures in babysitting or whatever. What is it? What no? What's the one where the girl gets kidnapped? The Goblin King, right? Ah, oh, damn! I don't know. About? It's like David, David Bowie. Bowie. That's just all I see is the David Bowie. The Labyrinth. Labyrinth. Thank you. What is yes. It? Yes. yes. It's, whew. Uh, yeah. So so definitely. Um, I get what's going on with with uh, with Gambit. You didn't like what's happening with him. I I think it's good. So, I think. To clear this up, is this just like a continuation of the old one? Uh-huh. It oh. is. It is. Yeah. It's pretty much a reboot of that series and they're continuing no, no. it. As in leaves off the next episode takes place right after the last episode. Okay, Let me tell you something. Yeah. I yeah. love what they did in episode one. To just yeah. tie it all together and then say goodbye. And yeah. that's good. I might watch it over again. You could watch it over again. That's it's really a fantastic show in the first they place. They only had four seasons, so right. you could easily watch that quickly. There's a lot of seasons. There's a lot of episodes. Left. And now that I think about it, Magneto is like my first bad guy that I liked. Yeah. Where I like, first one you agree with. Well, I understood. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe he's not necessarily a bad guy. All right, gang. That's going to do it for us here at the Alter Ego Podcast, episode 169 in the books. I've been your host, Jack, Ryan, Rhino, Nello. Everybody, y'all have a good week. Bye. We'll see you next week. Magneto is a Martin Luther King of mutants. Yes, he is. I would say more like the Malcolm X. Can it be both? There. There.